In this video, we're going to be learning all about drawing global graphs. First, let's take a quick look at the process that we need to follow when we're going to draw a global graph. The first thing that you need to do when you're going to draw a global graph is you need to determine whether the data that you're working with is continuous or discrete. If it's continuous, it means that the data is measured, and if it's discrete, it means that it is counted. You also need to identify the independent variable. This is the variable that's going to go on the horizontal axis. And the dependent variable is the one that's going to go on the vertical axis. The independent variable is the one that doesn't get affected by changes in the other variable. Okay, but the dependent variable does get affected by changes in the independent variable. Once you know what type of data you're working with, and which variable is independent and which variable is dependent, you then need to go and use the information that you are given to draw the graph. And you need to make sure that your graph has got a suitable title. If the data is continuous, you also need to make sure that you join the dots or the points with lines. Okay, so let's have a look at the first example that we're going to be doing in this lesson. So here's our example. You heat water up in a kettle. The starting temperature of the water is 20 degrees Celsius. The temperature increases steadily for two minutes until it reaches 100 degrees Celsius and starts boiling. It continues boiling for 30 seconds, maintaining a constant temperature, and then the kettle turns off. The water then cools at a steady rate, with the temperature dropping to 75 degrees Celsius in three minutes. Represent this information on a graph. So the first thing you're going to do is you need to use this information to determine what type of data we're working with. Is it continuous or is it discrete? You also need to identify what the independent variable is in this example and what the dependent variable is. I'm going to give you a few seconds to work those few things out. Okay, so let's go through those quickly. So first, the data type. You should have found that the data type is continuous. Okay, this is data that we are measuring. Then the next thing you have to do is work out which uh, variable is independent. The independent variable in this example is the time. And the dependent variable is the temperature of the water. So the time is going to go on the horizontal axis. The temperature of the water is going to go on the vertical axis. Okay, so now you're going to go and actually draw this graph. If you've got the worksheet that goes with this lesson, then you can just do it on the axes that are provided. Otherwise, you're going to need to draw some axes for yourself first. Okay, so I'm going to give you two minutes to draw this graph.
Okay, so let's go through that quickly. So the first thing you have to do was set up your axes. So you should have had your time on the horizontal axis and your temperature on the vertical axis. Time is measured in minutes, temperature is measured in degrees Celsius, and you needed to have your values also shown on the axes like this. And you also need to make sure that you have got a suitable title. I called mine temperature of water in a kettle. You would have something similar to that, hopefully. Okay, then you have to go and plot the points based on the information that you were given. So let's quickly have a look at the information that you were given. The first thing you were told is the starting temperature of the water is 20 degrees Celsius. So at time zero, your temperature should be 20 degrees Celsius. Then you should have gone up for two minutes. It increases to 100 degrees Celsius. So at the two minute mark, the temperature should be 100 degrees Celsius and then it starts boiling and it stays at that temperature, a constant temperature for 30 seconds. And then the kettle is turned off and the water cools down over a time of three minutes, dropping to 75 degrees Celsius. So let's have a look at what your graph should look like. So here's our axis. The first point you had to plot was the starting temperature of 20 degrees Celsius at time zero. Okay, then the kettle was turned on and the water started to heat up and it reached 100 degrees after two minutes. So that's the next point that you should have over there. Then it stayed at a constant temperature for 30 seconds. So at the end of those 30 seconds, the temperature is still going to be 100 degrees Celsius. And then the kettle got turned off and the temperature started to drop until it reached 75 degrees Celsius after three minutes. So from this point, three minutes later is two and a half, then three and a half, four and a half, five and a half minutes. So this point is at the five and a half minute mark because that's three minutes after the two and a half minutes, which is when it turned off. And that is 75 degrees Celsius over there. So those are the points that you should have plotted. Then because this is continuous data, you also had to make sure that you join those points up like this so that you would be able to read the temperature at any time, not only at those points, because remember, the, temp is the temperature is going to be changing throughout this five and a half minute period. It's not going to be 20 degrees Celsius at zero, and then suddenly at two minutes, it becomes 100 degrees Celsius. It is increasing from 20 to 100 throughout the course of those two minutes, because it is continuous data. Okay, so we should be able to read the temperature at any point, not only at the times that we plotted points like this. Okay, so that's what we should have got for that example. The next example we're going to do is this one over here. A nature reserve charges 25 Rand per person entering, in addition to a flat rate of 150 Rand for the vehicle. Represent the total cost of entry on a graph based on the number of people entering together in the same vehicle Assuming the, vehicle, assuming the vehicle can hold a maximum of 10 people. Okay, so once again, you need to determine what is the data type here. Is it continuous data or is it discrete data? You also need to identify what the independent variable is and what the dependent variable is. Okay, so I'm going to give you a few seconds to work those things out. Okay, so let's go through that quickly. So the data type in this example is discrete data. Okay, it's discrete data because you're counting the number of people that are going in. You're not going to have 
half a person going into the nature reserve, you can't have anything between one person and two people. You can't have anything between two people and three people. So it is discrete data. We're counting the number of people that are going into the nature reserve. Okay. The independent variable is the number of people that are entering the nature reserve together. And the dependent variable is going to be the cost that is based on the number of people that are entering. Remember, the independent variable is not affected by the dependent variable. The number of people is not affected by the cost. However, the cost depends on the number of people. So the cost is the dependent variable in this example. Right, now you're going to go and you're going to represent this on a graph. I'm going to give you two minutes to do this graph. Okay, so let's go through what your graph should look like. The first thing you had to do was to set up your axes. It should look something like this. So you should have the number of people on your horizontal axis because that is your independent variable. And then the cost on your vertical axis because that is the dependent variable. You also need to have a suitable title for your graph. I called mine total cost of entry to nature reserve based on number of people. You should have had something along those lines. Okay. Once you've set up your axes, you then need to go and plot your points. So let's go and have a look at the information we were given. So first of all, it says that the nature reserve charges 25 Rand per person entering. So for every person, you're going to add another 25 Rand. Okay, so it's going to get 25 Rand more for each additional person that is coming in. But there's also an additional flat rate of 150 Rand just for the vehicle. Okay, so let's go and have a look at what our graph is going to look like. So over here, if there were no people entering this nature reserve and the vehicle somehow came in on its own, it would be 150 Rand. But the reality is you're not going to have that happening. A vehicle is not going to come in on its own without a person in it. So we're not going to plot a point over here because that's not something that would actually be able to happen. So let's go on to if one person is going to enter the nature reserve in a vehicle. So then they're coming with their vehicle, which is 150 Rand, plus the cost for that one person, which is 25 Rand. So that gives us 175 Rand for that one person entering in that vehicle. Then if there were two people in the vehicle, you still have the 150 Rand plus the 25 Rand for the first person, plus another 25 Rand for the second person, bringing the cost up to 200 Rand. Then, if you had three people in the vehicle, it's the same concept. You start with 150 for the vehicle, 
plus 25 rand for the first person, plus another 25 rand for the second person, and plus another 25 rand for the third person. So for three people, the cost would be 225 rand. And then the same thing for the fourth person, you add another 25 rand and that gives you 250. Then for the fifth person, you add another 25, giving you 275. For the sixth person, you add another 25, bringing the cost up to 300 rand. For a uh, seventh person, you add yet another 25 rand, bringing that cost up to 325 rand. For eight people, it goes up to 350. For nine people, it goes up to 375. And for 10 people, the cost would be 400 rand. So depending on the number of people that are in the vehicle that are coming into this nature reserve, the cost is going to vary. Okay, so that's why the cost is our dependent variable because it depends on the number of people that are coming into the nature reserve. But it's not purely dependent on the number of people, it's also dependent on the fact that they, or it's also based on the fact that they have a car. So it's not just 25 rand per person, it's also the vehicle that they're coming in which is being charged 150 rand. Okay, so that is what your graph should look like. Now because this is discrete data, we are not going to join these points up because you're not going to be able to find a cost for one and a half people going into the nature reserve because one and a half people won't be going into the nature reserve. That's just not possible. So we can only find the cost for specific number of people that are going into the nature reserve. So we're not going to have anything in between because this is not continuous data. It is discrete data because it is based on the number of people being counted. Okay, and that is how you draw global graphs. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.